I mean, did I actually just make a YouTube video called Beginner's Guide to Running? I mean, running's easy, right? You just throw on some sportswear. Grab some trainers. Leave the house. Oh no, have I got my keys? And you just start running, right? As far and as fast as you can. I mean, running's the most simplest thing it should be, right? And it is. But once you get into it, there's a lot more than you think. So let's begin. Hi, welcome to the channel. And if you're new here, my name's Scott. And this is the beginning of a three part series on a beginner's guide to running. So throughout the series, I'm going to be going through the initial journey, what to expect, any tips and recommendations along the way. And finally, uh, that transformation into a beginner runner into a more intermediate regular runner. Uh, before we go into any of that and cover any of the technical details at all, we have to start with one question. And that is, why do you want to run? If you are able to answer that question to yourself and keep reinforcing that reason in your mind, that reason alone is going to keep you on this path. Because trust me, you will encounter tough days, weeks, where let's say the weather is miserable outside, or work is busy, or you just want to lay in and rest. Don't get me wrong, running is amazing when you get into it, but it's not without some sacrifice. There's a brilliant book and audio version by Brian Keane called The Fitness Mindset. And this isn't anything to do with running at all actually, but it goes into the psychology of that why, why people want to do something. So if you want to read more into the topic, that's definitely a recommendation I can give you. With that said, let's go over some of the most common reasons people want to start running in the first place. Okay, kicking things off with arguably the best benefit to running and no doubt the most popular reason to running is to improve fitness. So this was actually my main reason as well when I started this journey and when you think about it, improving fitness has a never ending list of benefits it can give you both directly and indirectly. So whether it's everyday chores and tasks becoming that bit easier to just being able to go on longer walks, longer hikes or even just a kick about with friends. Improving fitness will hopefully just improve your overall quality in life. So not to be underestimated as a massive benefit to running. Running itself is probably one of the best ways to improve your cardiovascular system as well and it's seen as one of the best ways to improve your fitness. Number two and a very popular reason I hear a lot is running to help lose weight or maintain it. So it's definitely one of the biggest motivation factors uh, people start running and whether that's just to drop a dress size or a waist size if you've got a particular event let's say a wedding coming up or just to feel better about yourself. What I will say is it's uh, quite easy just to associate running with losing weight but I would try to steer away from that and look at all the other key benefits running can give you but absolutely if, if this is your main motivation and driver to start running then yeah run with it with no pun intended and it's definitely a huge benefit for a lot of people. And thirdly, and I've bundled these all together uh, because they all quite nicely interlink, is to improve mental health, well-being and stress. So starting with mental health, runners are arguably the most toughest people I've met in my time. Uh, they're definitely very resilient. Running as an exercise, as a, a way of life almost, uh, makes you really resilient and really uh, great at combating uh, stresses and tra uh, challenges in life. So that's definitely a huge benefit. Well-being, um, I've just got the definition of well-being here just in case you don't know it. So it's the state of being comfortable, healthy or happy. So who doesn't want to be any of those three things? And again, another huge benefit and probably underrated in terms of a benefit to running. And finally, to reduce stress. So exercise in general is widely considered the very best way to reduce stress. And running is probably high up, if not number one, on that list as a form of exercise to do it. And so obviously no one wants to be stressed in life. And running is a great way of uh, reducing uh, your stress levels. The endorphins you obviously get as well uh, through, through running at certain times can really just be melt away the stress, really, is what I'm trying to say. And finally, it's a new hobby. So 
if you've uh, obviously gone through lockdown, you have more time on your hands now. Uh, running is obviously a very key hobby to have in life and can really get some enjoyment out of it. Uh, I've been very privileged to meet some great people in, in my uh, running journey so far and long may that continue hopefully. And it's also, also a very social thing to do as well. And one of the best things you can do is to join your local running club, let's say, or athletics club. And uh, I've actually joined two. So I joined Eastleigh Running Club way back and I have recently joined Hilton Bree Long Distance Runners in my local area. So big shout out to them two running clubs. And yeah, it's a brilliant hobby to have and a great way to meet people, like-minded people and just be more social. So these are the top four reasons I've given to the key benefits of running. If you've got any ideas of your own that you can see from your experiences, uh, pop it in the comments and I'm sure I'll read them through. Okay, that covers the section of why you want to run and hopefully by watching that you may have picked out your why. Uh, next we're going to move on to what you need. So running can be as basic and as free as you want it to be, but if you are going to spend a bit of money on this, the one thing I would highly recommend spending it on above anything else is running trainers. Now I made a mistake like a lot of people when I started running. I went to Sports Direct and bought some 30 pound trainers when I started this and I've got the pair here actually. So these are just on the face of it just look like any old trainers but when you compare them to a dedicated running trainer such as these Brooks they're about half the weight which is uh, outstanding anyway and then you can see it's just got so much more dedicated support for, for your running. So. If you are going to spend anything at all, I would spend it on some actual proper made for running trainers. What I'd recommend is visiting your local running shop. Uh, they will have an expert there that will be able to offer the best advice and they'll also probably offer a gait analysis for free. Uh, this is going to obviously follow your foot strike pattern and work out where you need the support if, if anywhere. And most of them offer it for free. I think Alton Sports, they it comes free if you buy the trainer. So that'd be my number one biggest recommendation. Everything else I'm going to cover in this series uh, that involves maybe spending money. If you don't have the budget, focus solely on getting a good pair of trainers. So apart from trainers, what else are you going to need? Well, you're going to want clothing and to be comfortable in all seasons and conditions. So let me show you what I've learned over the years or what's best to wear at different times of the year. Starting with spring, which is the season we're in now, and it's my favourite season of the year to run in because you really can get by with just shorts and a simple t-shirt. This would be appropriate for most of the season within spring. If you are running in the early hours in the morning, you may want to go with a longer sleeve top just because it is a tad cooler. Moving on to summer wear and you want some shades, cool hat and a nice Hawaiian shirt. I'm um, just playing. You know, I think I've really started to lose it during lockdown. What you do actually want to wear in the summer is a nice vest, normally when the temperature is above 20 degrees or so. This is going to help keep you cool and you don't have to worry about sweat marks at all. A good tip is to try and always wear sun cream because more of your body is exposed to the sun and I definitely don't want you burning. Moving on to autumn and you may want to lose the shorts at this stage and go for something a bit longer. Normally, for most of the season, you can get by with just a t-shirt, but for particular cold mornings or days, you may want just a light jacket just to go over to give yourself an extra little bit of cover. Finally, moving on to winter, and at this stage, you do want to upgrade that jacket into something a bit thicker, as I'm demonstrating here. Also, when the temperature is, say, below two degrees or lower, hats and gloves are going to come in hand. And also, if you are running at night because the days are shorter, do try and wear something reflective. So that covers nicely the basics of what you need to run. And those seasons and temperature examples are from the UK point of view. So if you do live elsewhere, just take that into consideration. That might be different for you. The third topic I'm covering today in this part series is to learn your fitness level. And this is something actually I can't help you with too much. It's something you will have to explore and discover for yourself. But when you first start running, do you know if you can, for example, run a 5k without stopping? If you can or can't, that's not a problem. It's just learning what level you're at, what distances you can cover, and what you would consider a quick pace, an easy pace, and anything in between. So hopefully that's gonna be fun for you to go out and explore that. 
and just really start to enjoy it uh, over the weeks. What I would try and recommend in those first few runs you take is to do try and take it easy. But I know in reality, you're gonna wanna go all guns blazing and go as quick as you can and just see what you're capable of. And that's fine as well. You're gonna learn through both experiences uh, about yourself and what you are capable of. So yeah, just enjoy it is the main thing. So that's everything from this part of the series. I have got part two and three to come. Part two, we're gonna explore about four weeks into this journey, uh, what to expect. So things on injury prevention, uh, diet, uh, types of workouts and runs you can take. So yeah, please subscribe if you haven't because I don't know when I'm gonna drop that video, but hopefully it'll be in the next two weeks or so. So yeah, not one to miss if you have watched this one so far. So thank you very much and take care.